Hey guys, it's Pina, and today I want to go over the probably the best corruption pushing build of the patch, and it's going to be ZHP Belisa Falconer. For those who don't know, ZHP means zero HP, only investing into damage. Our only source of um, mitigation is going to be Silver Shroud. So, what is Silver Shroud? Uh, it's a, a buff that lets you dodge the next hit you would receive instead, and it gives you a uh, ward per stack of Silver Shroud. So we get this with Smoke Bomb, uh, and we also get this with um, Coordinated Fade in our pa in our Falconer passive, which uh, I have two points in, so it's on my W. If I had one point in the passive, it would be on Smoke Bomb. So as many points as you put is how is where on your ability bar it's going to proc the Silver Shroud. So if I press Ballista, I can get this every 10 seconds, and for Smoke Bomb, I can get this every 5 seconds since I put Smoke Bomb as my Traversal Skill. Although this is like my bossing setup for mapping, I will go and remove this point, okay, for mapping. This is something I will update in the actual guide. You can find my guide in the description below and in the comments. Um, I remove the traversal skill on Smoke Bomb, and I remove the non-traversal skill on Aerial Assault. So I will use Aerial Assault, which Aerial Assault will buff my Ballistas, because inside of that skill, uh, inside of that skill tree, there is a node that makes you deal more damage per intelligence. So on this build, you want to stack as much dexterity and intelligence as possible. So, um, okay, I'll go over one map real quick. I'll have footage of my pinnacle boss skill at the end of this video, uh, so you can see how mapping goes and how bossing goes. But why is this the best build for corruption pushing? Because you're only investing into damage. So you have like Belisas that are automatically targeting everything. It's my first echo of the day, so here. Keep in mind, you will die sometimes with this build, right? So, you must be aware of your Silver Shrouds. Um, Ballistas deal a ton of damage. You also have your Decoy to help you out. If you take a hit, remember to, like, get your Silver Shrouds up again. You can do a couple of things. You can cast a Decoy behind you and continue moving forward. So, that way, you are a bit safer against monsters. Here, I died. I, didn't, I was not uh, careful with the poison. But you kind of see how it goes. Let's do another map so you can see actually um, how this goes. Why is this the best corruption pusher? A few things they made. Um, they made dying to Shade of Orbis not consume your entire stacks of, um, of, of, of Gaze of Orbis. So your Gazes of Orbis, now you can, you can accumulate them by killing the boss with a Harbinger Needle. And um, that allows you to have basically infinite Gaze of Orbis. And so you can die a couple of times against the Shade. And you will still get your full four stacks um, of, of Gaze of Orbis. Increasing your Corruption by more than 50, right? It's going to increase by, by 48 plus whatever the, the Shade gives you. So it is extremely easy to push Corruption now. And so is there is there even a reason to push Corruption? Well, if you're COF, the... I would say the meta would be to stay at 1,000 Corruption since they've reduced drastically the experience gain and since favor scales with experience gain, then you want to uh, stay at 1,000 and go as fast as possible. But for Merchant's Guild, the loot drops, the increased item rarity, it still scales. And the higher you are in Corruption, higher your chance for LP items as well. I don't know the exact formula for the LP chance, but it is increasing the, more, the higher you go in Corruption. So if you can keep the same pace, since this is a ZHP build, and you will keep the same pace pretty much so long as you keep your damage up. So keep upgrading your gear only for damage, and you will be more efficient than if, if you would stay at a lower amount of corruption. Uh, if you're trying to level this build, start you, 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 you can start right away with the ZHP version. Um, if, you, if this is your second character, for example, and you have like a pair of Morning Frost, like so Morning Frost gives you one cold damage to attacks and spell per point of dex. So you're scaling dex like crazy. And then uh, your Ballista gets 75% of whatever damage that you get. So they get 75% of these points of dex. And then they, you also can get plus two to all minion skills and a bunch of base crit chance. And they get your entire critical strike chance with this node. Crit ratio applies at 100%. Um, so this makes it very, very easy. It also gives you... Um, it also gives you four extra points. With the Falcon, that is five extra points. And these are usable very early. 
Um, all of these items are usable super early. So you will just blast the campaign with plus five levels of Ballista and a bunch of flat damage because you will have Morning Frost Boot. So you play ZHP right off the bat. Um, as soon as you unlock Smoke Bomb, the important part is going for the Silver Shroud stacks to guarantee the next dodge, right? And um, yeah, I've had a really, really good time. Uh, I'm now level 100 and I am ready to explain to you exactly how this goes. So let's go over it, right? We went for we went to, went for mapping. I'm going to show an example of the boss fight at the end of this video. But Ballista, the first thing you want to do is you want to grab um, all the more damage multipliers, right? Well, grab the minus mana cost because Ballista, if not, costs a ton of mana. So you want to grab the minus mana cost. Then you want to grab the damage stat ratio. Then you want to go for the crit stuff. And you want to go for the duration, right? So all the damage things. One pierce is really nice for clear. When you have enough points with, with all your gear set up, you will go for Elixir of Construction, which increases your damage uh, by 100% whenever you uh, use a potion. And then you place the Ballista afterwards. So I use a potion. I got missed my use potion recently buff. So this will apply. Uh, this is what tells me that I can't put down my Ballistas. So I usually pop a potion. Put like maybe like four ballistas. And then when I move, I've got my affix to teleport my ballistas with me. Five minions teleported around after I use a traversal skill. So this just, you know, it brings my ballista with me, kills everything around me, and then I can continue and play some more ballistas, pop another potion. And your ballistas will also drop potions for you along their duration. One at the, the, the midpoint of their life and one at the end. They will only drop a potion if they have hit an enemy. So you can't use this to cheese uh, like, you know, spamming potions when there are no enemies around. The last point I put is for ailment stat ratio so that it applies my armor shred, my cold shred, my physical shred and all these things, right? So that is for Ballista. Uh, early on, Falconry is used uh, a little bit for damage. So it has a gr great damage since it has the same scaling. Basically, you get the damage per point of dexterity. But it's, all, it's also used to apply ailments. Fear. Fear is really good. Since we're a ZHP build, we need some sort of CC guaranteed. So I have two fears, one on my Falcon and one on my uh, decoy. So I want to use the Falcon to fear, for example, exile mages, certain bosses ability, uh, the nemesis, stuff like that. And then you also gain a, a certain amount of uh, mana gain as well. And then you get a kill threshold. Uh, mainly just as a support, kill threshold and fearing. Smoke Bomb, as we said, you can use this for two things. In bossing, I use this as a, as a, um, um, as a traversal skill. So that I get my my Silver Shroud every 5 seconds. So I can get hit every 5 seconds. You still have to play carefully. But you can make one mistake at least every 5 seconds. So this will feel very good for bossing. Uh, if not, I remove it and I just use it for the Silver Shroud. Uh, you know, get some more dodge here with the Dusk Shroud. And then get more duration. Aerial Assault. Main note here, Tactician. To get increased uh, more damage per intelligence. And it also gives 75% Belisa attack speed. This is why for mapping it's quite nice because as soon as you move, all your ballista gets buffed anyways. Uh, like they get buffed automatically and they move move with you. So that is going to make it very nice for mapping. Other than this, I go for the missing mana recovered, uh, some more dodge while traveling, right? So that when you are actually using it, you'll see that your dodge chance will go through the roof, right? 58% here for me. Uh, cooldown and then uh, these notes here. I go for the... Storm of the Horizon to remove the traversal tag on bosses so that I can use it as a buff ability instead and then use Smoke Bomb as my traversal skill like this, right? And Decoy. Decoy, the most important note. Two charge, duration. Very important because you want the duration so that, you know, uh, your decoy takes the aggro off of you for the longest time and you have two charges so you can have like a decent amount of time to place your Ballistas, buff them up, and then, you know, let them dispose of enemies. So that pretty much covers the skills. Um, this is the setup I prefer. In terms of gear, I'll have the link in the description. The build is on max roll. Uh, there's a full written guide for the like uh, the non ZHP uh, the non ZHP version, uh, explaining all the mechanics. But there's also like a portion of it in the gearing section talking about both ZHP turret ballista and ZHP explosive ballista. That was the build I played in 1.0. If you want to have like full, like full screen AOE, even like wider than full, than one screen. Um, this has been bug fixed. It was a bug. It was scaling. Uh, instead of scaling area, it was scaling radius. There was way more. I didn't know about this. This build does not, as far as I know, does not have any bugs in it. 
So uh, this is totally legit. And uh, yeah, in the gearing section, ZHP, click on the planner there. It's going to open up and you can see exactly what uh, what this is about. But I use Bone Clarin Bar Butte since with these rings now, uh, we don't have to uh, scale our crit as much. So we can use Bone Climber Barbute to get even more dexterity and even more intelligence to get, you know, like dexterity is the main scaling stat of Ballista with intelligence getting its more multiplier. It's just excellent. The Kestrel for the plus level, Jungle Queens for the, de for the dexterity. Uh, we get Morning Frost for the extra cold damage to attacks and spells, which scales our Ballista at 75% of, um, of the amount of damage that we get. We get Death Rattle because it's intelligence and it's also mini crit multi. Uh, I am wondering if um, Nihilis would not be a good choice here for plus two skill levels, but uh, I have not yet done the calculations. I would have to see if Nihilis or Death Rattle is better. Uh, e either or, you'll be fine with it. We use a... The Paragloss that we essentially want to use will not be this one. It will be in the end, end game. Um, let's go over here in the ZHP variant. So this is what it's going to look like on max roll. The Blood Roost... Uh, if you manage to get a Blood Roost for the Dexterity, it's extremely good, right? Um, so that is the best in slot that you are aiming for. But, you know, in the meantime, while while you build your gear here, uh, feel free to use any other items that you that you uh, obtain along the way and then work your way towards the best in slot, right? Intelligent Dexterity, uh, Chance to Shred Armor on Hit. It's going to be important to get a certain amount of Chance to Shred because you only have 25% of your ailment stat ratio. And in your Falk in your marksman tree, you get you got 25% uh, armor shred chance here. So they don't apply a lot of armor shred, but they get a lot of increased effect with your idols. So we're gonna see this a little bit later. Um, so that is what we are aiming for here. Melvin's writ just generally good base crit, increased melee damage, dexterity. Uh, you'd like to get plus ballista and dexterity here. This is the most important ones. For your bow, Eurotrin Stand gives you plus two maximum Ballista. This is a must-have for this build. This scales your damage extremely well since you only start out with two. Uh, with uh, you only start out with uh, very few Ballistas, so getting two more is going to be very, very important. Um, and then Zuriel Hunt, you want to get this because it has a flat bow lightning damage roll on it. If you get this to be very high, closer to thirty-two, this is an extremely high roll of flat damage. Even though it's not, we mainly deal physical and cold damage. Physical, because that is what Ballista is. And then Cold Damage, because that is what Morning Frost is giving us. Plus one Cold Damage. But um, even this this uh, Lightning Damage is going to be um, very good. Since we're scaling flat anyway, we're scaling minion Damage. Um, this is going to get increased by all of these things. For our Idols, you aim to get uh, Shared Minion Crit Multi. Another option here, if you don't have this, is just plus flat uh, damage for Ballista. And then you want to get Armor Shred Effect. Or you want to get increased bow critical strike chance to reach a cap of 100% crit chance. So go for as many of these idols with increased bow crit as you need to get to 100% crit. All the rest you want to get increased armor shred effect since you'll need to apply much less armor shred to get the full benefits out of them, right? Well, to get as, as much benefit out of them. Um, in our blessing, we want to go for critical strike multiplier here, increased cold damage. So these are the ones that you find here in the black sun crit multi. Ending the storm, increase cold damage. You want to go for critical strike avoidance on grand survival of might. Why a crit avoidance? Well, crit avoidance scales our crit multi thanks to finesse them in the falconer tree. So every uh, you get three percent crit avoidance. Every three percent crit avoidance, you get one percent crit multi. So that is why we're taking this. And our last passives here: um, chance to shred cold res. Right? Very important. Uh, yeah. Chance to Shred Cold Res uh, is going to be pretty important because we are scaling our... Um, with our Dexterity, we're going to be scaling Cold Damage as much as possible. So that is going to be the best to get there. Uh, another option could be Chance to Shred Physical Res, you know, one or the other. But like Cold Res seems to be better. And then Increased Minion Damage is going to be uh, what you want from Spirits of Fire. Actually, I would need to like double check if... Uh, I need to double check if Ch Chance to Shred Cold Res or physical res is better because armor shred is more effective against physical hits. Um, let me get back to you on this. I'll post in the comments uh, and I'll, I'll update the guide. But um, no, it seems to be that we want physical shred, actually. It seems to be that we want physical shred. Actually, actually, I need to change this to physical shred, I think. So that pretty much covers the uh, gearing section. If we go into the passives here, 
the passive. We want to go for as much damage as possible. So it's very straightforward. Um, you know, just follow the what we have on the max roll here in terms of passive. There is like a little slider here at the bottom. Um, there's a little bug here. I will fix it. It says that you can't grab this one and then it still grabs it one point before. But like, okay, just put one extra point in like re Relentless Talons or put one extra point somewhere else in like Expediency and you'll be fine, right? But follow the skill progression. It's just uh, Dexterity, Damage, Damage, Minion Damage, all, all these kinds of things, Crit Avoidance, um, Flat Damage. Just grab as much damage as possible and you will do absolutely fine. So I am now at a reasonable 1,564 Corruption. I've cleared a Pinnacle Boss. This build will reach three, four, five, I don't know, higher levels, higher amounts of Corruption. Uh, in my opinion, this is likely to be the absolute best Corruption pusher. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, keep in mind, this is a softcore build. Um, it is not for everyone. You will die once in a while. And um, I hope you have a good time with ZHP Ballista Falconer. If you've played Explosive Ballista in 1.0, you might very well enjoy this build since it's pretty much the same defense scaling, which is zero. And you're just like dealing full damage uh, and off screening enemies all the time. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave you guys with the boss fight uh, at the end. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye bye. Shut up.